What's going on my broskies? My name is Toadski, back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the new Shipyard update. And yeah, we only just had the introduction of a bunch of new ship upgrades, but now we have another batch of, of ships that are going to be accessible for level 12 and obviously ship modifications as well. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this video today. So it's going to be really, really fun. So obviously June 9th is when this is all going to be going live. And obviously it says in order to upgrade, you do need the Super Cola and you can obtain it from Pirate King Adventures. So if you actually take it into consideration through each season of Pirate King Adventures, if you complete all of the missions up to level 150, you can get seven Super Cola and you can purchase three Super Cola from the exchange shop, totaling for 10 Super Cola per season guaranteed, which means that, you know, obviously you would need two seasons completed in order to fully deck out one of these ships completely. So overall, it means that if they do end up releasing a Grand Voyage every two months, you actually should be able to, you know, level up a ship that is required in order to beat that content. So hopefully that cycle, that cycle doesn't seem too terrible to me. But of course, the problem is, is that normal cola is just overtly really difficult to acquire right now, as they've essentially removed it from every piece of content in the game. The only real ways to acquire cola now is to basically buy it from the Rayleigh shop or to drop it from Pirate King Adventures. But considering, you know, the drops from Pirate King Adventures are so bad, it's going to be very hard for a lot of people to deck out most of these ships to their liking, which is just really unfortunate overall. Um, so it is a bit of an issue. And then Super Cola itself is very difficult to get a hold of. So overall, the system, I like the ship modification features, but it's just super unaccessible for most people. But at the same time, you do have to remember that these ship modifications are not really required to beat content. The only content that's really required to beat right now is level 5 Arlong, and 99% of the player base is not even going to be able to beat it anyway due to the investments that are required not only on that ship, but also on the characters themselves. So... You know, you have to take all of this into consideration. Yeah, it sucks, but at the same time, you don't need to max these ships for anything, uh, at least right now anyway. So anyways, without further ado, I digress. Let's just go ahead and talk about each of these ship upgrades. So the first ship that we're going to be talking about is this ship right here, the Marine and Navy ship. So this is the current abilities for you guys that you can see here. It's not the, not the best. It gives shooter characters 100 attack. 100 attack and then boost the cruise HP by 1.5 there were instances where this ship was actually usable due to the fact that that 1.5 times HP boost was sometimes required for certain teams way back in the day nowadays not really too much so the Navy ship now will have an upgrade for shooters and fighters to receive 500 base attack boost, which is pretty decent, I suppose. It gives them 1.75 HP, and that's for the whole crew, by the way. That's a pretty substantial increase. And then shooter and fighter characters get 1.5 times attack. So it is a solely shooter and fighter focused ship, which I actually kind of like. I like the fact that they're adding an attack boost and they're giving some classification to this ship to be used with certain teams. And honestly, this ship might see some play, but at least as, for, as of right now, I don't see a real use for this ship. Uh, furthermore, the special effect for modification at level 1 gives a boosted chance of landing on a matching slot, which is pretty reasonable. And then the second effect reduces paralysis by one turn for the whole team. It seems like a pretty good ship when completely maxed out, but unfortunately, fighters themselves are pretty bad, and are probably one of the worst classes in the game, and shooters are pretty decent, I suppose. They, they have some, some, some kind of teams you can use, but I mean... Again, the rainbow style ships that we know and love are still really good that don't require any investment. So there isn't really a reason to level up this ship, at least right now. All right, so the next one on the list is going to be the Marshall D. Teach pirate ship. So this is a big one because when this first came out, this is a really powerful ship giving 1.25 HP, minus one cooldown, and then if you have a fighter slash a striker and a shooter on your crew, you get a 1.55 times attack boost. I believe this is one of the first, if not the first ship in the game to actually give you cooldown. Um, so it was actually kind of big at the time, but of course being able to build a team with a fighter, shooter, striker, and a slasher on the team not the easiest thing to do so you know it does require a bit of setup and obviously we're supposed to go in tandem with v1 blackbeard that has the same condition in his captain ability so let's go ahead and see what upgrades they've given to this ship so we can see that the marshall d teach pirate ship has a pretty big update so first of all 1.75 times hp that is crazy then reduces cooldown by one at the start of the quest furthermore if you have a fighter slasher striker and a shooter on the crew 
you get a 1.75 times attack boost, but then it further says if Driven and Powerhouse characters are on the crew, so it's just a further condition to add, then it adds or it multiplies 1.1 into the attack boost of the ship. So 1.75 multiplied by 1.1 equates to a 1.925 times ship. Like, that is just the craziest thing ever, to have a ship that gives you 1.75 HP and 1.925 times attack, on top of, you know, just having cooldown as well, like, oh my god, this is, this is crazy, it's just, in terms of damage, it's just absolutely bonkers, but obviously the big issue is, is you need to have fighter slash a striker shooter, and if you want the most out of it, you would also need to run driven and powerhouse, so... It, it, it does require some setup for sure, but if you are able to get it, this is bonkers, dude. This is actually insane. Uh, I think this is the highest attack ship in the game currently. Um, the only thing that really comes close to it, obviously, is the Shark Superb ship, but you only start at two times attack, and that does decrease every single turn. So it will not take long for this ship to be, you know, considered the, the best attacking ship in the game. It's just insane. Uh, but the special effects adds even more reduces special charge time by two turns at the start of the quest Are you kidding me dude two turns? Oh my god So minus three cooldown and then further reduces bind by, by one turn I mean dude, this is this is probably one of the best ships in the game But of course there is the big issue of the restriction, right? So the restriction is the big thing and it makes sense because you have such a powerful effect You need to have something to make it a little bit more difficult to use for most people and they've done that for sure but this ship i'm telling you is going to see some play moving forward into the future this is one of the best ships in the game hands down all right and then the final ship that they're going to be adding here is the big mama chanter so this ship boosts the crew's chance of landing on a type slot fair enough boosts hp by 1.25 and then if you have a captain that is either driven or powerhouse then it provides a 1.5 times attack boost to strength, dex, and quick. However, if you hit three perfects in a row, the attack boost is buffed to 1.65. So that's pretty decent. It's not a bad ship, and when it came out, it was uh, it was a really powerful ship with V1 Big Mom, of course, but like even Douglas Bullet being a strength strength uh, and quick focus captain uh and being able to use that with this with this ship is obviously very good giving bullet a, a really really substantial attack boost but then furthermore there is an additional effect a special six turn cooldown changes the bottom right character slot into recovery so of course you're supposed to use this with v1 big mom to generate recovery slots if needed to allow you to avoid the rampaging mechanic so maybe this is going to signify potentially V1 Big Mom getting a level limit break? Potentially? I don't know. Probably not, though. But let's see what they've done with this this one. The Big Mama Chanter's buffs are the following. It boosts the chances of landing on a type slot, which is the same. Boost HP by 1.5, up from 1.25. And then if the captain is driven on a powerhouse, you get a 1.7 times attack boost to strength X and quick. That's already substantial. Then if the crew lands three perfects in a row, you boost their attack by 1.8. And then it says, allows strength, dex, and quick characters to obtain recovery and similar slots with perfect taps. That's actually not a terrible ship, honestly. Very easy to do. You need a driven or powerhouse captain, and then you boost strength, dex, and quick. It's it's pretty straightforward. 1.8 times attack is very easily achievable, and being able to consume recovery and similar slots when you hit a perfect is actually really good. Uh, again, just works very well with the uh, V1 Big Mom, I suppose. Moving on, the special effect is slightly buffed where instead of changing just the bottom right character slot into recovery it now changes the entire bottom row slot into recovery so a very slight upgrade there and then the effects we get strength decks and quick characters get minus one cooldown and makes recovery into semla that is actually a pretty big upgrade remember that semla slots are pseudo recovery slots in the way that the opponent cannot change semla slots so you can do this in a way where you can secure, you know, the guaranteed similar slots on your bottom row with the ship special. And when you move on to the next stage, the opponent can't change them, which is just crazy. So I actually kind of dig this, you know, it's a very unique effect. It's probably not going to see a lot of play, but having the ability to generate these non-changeable slots and you can obviously carry them into multiple stages as only two of the characters on your crew will get them. 
but you can just abuse that so you can just keep them for a long time and ensure that the right characters have that slot to do as much damage as possible. Obviously, you hit three perfects, you get the bigger attack boost, and then those units that have that similar slot that you've carried over multiple stages, they can abuse that slot to uh, to defeat the opponent. So I, I kind of like what they're doing here with the Big Mama Chanter. Just unique effects that will be useful in very niche scenarios. So that is pretty much it. That's all of the ship upgrades that we have for this month, but I expect them to continue to do this moving forward. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing what they're going to be doing. These uh, uh, these shipyard up upgrades are looking insane. Obviously, the <laughs> the Blackbeard ship is just insanity. I think this is probably one of the best, like top three best ships in the game, honestly, at this point. But obviously, there's the big uh, drawback in its condition. But anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about all this down below in the comment section. Hopefully you enjoyed the video today. And if you guys did, make sure to go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post on my channel, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. And that, guys, I will see you guys within the next video.